Welcome to Biology My Passion. I am Saumya Harikrishna. Let us now learn the last chapter of our environment in biology. That is, uh, in this chapter we are talking about environment. Environment means the surrounding of a living organism. So here we are focusing on ecosystem. On the uh, earth or the biosphere, we have different ecosystem. Ecosystem means uh, an area where lot of living organisms like uh, plants, animals, microorganisms, human beings, they interact among themselves and also interact with the non-living components of the environment. Such a system where it is completely dependent on each other that is called an ecosystem. So ecosystem can be of two types, natural ecosystem and uh, artificial ecosystem. Natural means it already exists in nature, like a forest is an ecosystem, pond is an ecosystem, lake is an ecosystem, desert is another ecosystem. The same way artificial means garden that we are creating, but in a garden also we know microorganisms are there in the soil, plants are there, plants are uh, visited by insects and birds or sometimes dogs, cats and all will be there, so it is an ex ecosystem. Then crop field is another ecosystem. Aquarium, it is a miniature form of a pond that we keep in our house that is also an ecosystem, right? So, these are all artificial ecosystem. But I told any ecosystem, living organisms and non-living organisms interact among, uh, not organisms, non-living components interact among themselves. So, according to this, we can uh, divide the components of ecosystem into two. Living components are collectively called as biotic components, like uh, plants and animals. Whereas, non-living components form abiotic components. So, usually when we ask in the class what are the abiotic components or non-living components, immediately the children will start saying chair, table, board, uh, desk and all. No, we are not talking about non-living things. We are talking about non-living components of the environment, which are the temperature, humidity, rainfall, light, wind, soil, etc. Okay, because these are the ones needed for life to sustain. So any ecosystem if you take basically there should be a source of food. Who is preparing food? Only green plants and some photosynthetic bacteria can prepare food using energy from the sun. So they are called as producers. So an ecosystem should have producers at the first level. Depending on that producers animals or heterotrophs are there. They are collectively called as consumers they, because they are consuming. These consumers are of different types. If they are directly eating plants, they are called herbivores or they are considered as the primary consumers. But if animals are eating herbivores, they are called carnivores. They are coming under secondary or tertiary carnivores depending upon their level. Because there can be smaller animals or top carnivores like a lion, tiger, etc. So having said this, we will now discuss certain features of a uh, the uh, ecosystem where uh, food chains exist because here we saw one is eaten by another so there is a series of organisms connected by the relationship of who eating whom so in that way if you write you will get a food chain so let us discuss a few characteristics of food chain so you should know different examples of food chain uh, if it is a forest uh, ecosystem try to make one food chain pause the video and make write and then tell me uh, it can be plant then eaten by rabbit, eaten by tiger. Okay, very simple one, right? And if you take a pond as an ecosystem or an aquatic ecosystem, let's see. Then phytoplanktons. We have to start with the phytoplanktons or small organisms. Eaten by small animals like a zooplanktons. That is eaten by small fish. Small fish is eaten by big fish. You can either stop there or big fish is eaten by some birds visiting the aquatic system. Right? So like that also we can make. Now if you go to grassland, grass, grasshopper, it can be eaten by a frog, then a snake or a hawk like that it can go. So different examples you should know. One terrestrial and one aquatic minimum you should be thorough with. Now I am going to tell you about with an example of a grassland ecosystem where I am going to write a different organism. We start with the grass. Grass is eaten by a grasshopper. This grasshopper is eaten by a frog. Frog is eaten by a snake. Snake is eaten by a hawk. Okay. Now 
different organisms are there at different levels so that is called a trophic level so the different levels of a food chain are called the trophic levels so if you look at this particular food chain how many trophic levels are there this is 1 2 3 4 and 5 five trophic levels are there and grass is the producer whereas these all are consumers of this grasshopper is the herbivore this is carnivore hereafter all are carnivores or we can say this is primary consumer sorry this is primary consumer secondary consumer tertiary consumer and quaternary consumer but tertiary consumer is the fourth trophic level because when we count the trophic level we have to count producer also but consumers when we count we start from only herbivores a few characteristics of this uh, food chains are we have to discuss these points first is unidirectional flow of energy we know that only the producers can prepare food using the energy coming from sun so once this light energy is captured by the grass grass will carry out photosynthesis and it will make the food which will be taken by grasshopper by consuming this grass once grasshopper is eaten by frog the energy will go to frog so always the energy is going from sun to plant plant to herbivore carnivore like that can we imagine a frog is eaten by a grasshopper to get back the energy or can a plant get back the energy from grasshopper impossible so that's why we call the flow of energy in a food chain is unidirectional or lay in one direction now the second point to understand is one person love the sunlight is plenty or it is available to all plants but even then only one percent of the sun's light energy can be utilized by the green plants so that law is called a one person law so out of the light falling on the leaves the leaves will be utilizing only one percent of the solar energy for making food then next is 10 person law suppose the plant is making food but it is not immediately storing that food in the body that food is lot of energy is wasted in the form of heat that is called a heat loss or respiratory loss apart from that it will be utilizing it for its life processes growth and reproduction also so finally only on an average 10% of the energy produced by the plant will be stored in its body as reserve form. So, when a grasshopper is eating this grass, it will get only that stored 10%. The same way, the grasshopper also will utilize this energy available from the food for its life activities and respiratory loss. After that, only 10% will be stored in its body. So, when a frog is eating grasshopper, it will get only 10% of what grasshopper has stored. So, every trophic level, only 10% of energy is available from the previous trophic level. This law is called a 10% law. So, let's look at a very simple example. If the plant has 10,000 joule of energy in it, how much the grasshopper will get? 10%, 10% means 10 by 100 of 10,000. You know, 10 by 1000 is? 1 by 10 so we, we have to divide just by 10 or reduce 1 0 every stage you will easily get so it will be 1000 joule so what will be next 100 joule again I am dividing by 10 next will be 10 joule next will be 1 joule so look at the energy available to the last trophic level only 1 joule though the plant had 10,000 joule so this is called a 10% law, you will get questions like this. There can be questions, suppose 10,000 joule of energy is available with the plants. What is the energy available for a frog or a snake like that? Okay, sometimes they give the food chain, sometimes they give the members of the food chain. Then you have to arrange them first in that order of producer, herbivore, carnivore, then only start calculating. Okay, so this is the uh, first question you can get. 
So in from this we can explain the next uh, um, two points that is number of uh, trophic levels are limited in a food chain. So it will be 3, 4 or maximum 5 beyond that we don't write the reason being every stage only 10% is available for the next level. So uh, the higher levels very uh, less amount of available energy is there so number of uh, trophic levels are limited. And also look at the number of individuals in each trophic level. When you come to grass, their number is very huge. But when you come to hawk or tiger or lion, which is coming on the um, highest edge, they will be very limited in number. In a forest, there will be millions of plants, but there will be maximum two or three lions or tigers in that entire forest. So there comes the reduction in number because of the huge amount of energy they require and the less amount of energy available at the higher trophic levels. Food chain actually does not exist in ecosystem. It is only a hypothetical situation because always there are choices. The grasshopper can eat grass or any other plant, maybe some other seed also or a, uh, a bird also. The same way the grasshopper can be eaten by a frog or another bird or some other animals. It's not necessary that only a frog has to eat the grasshopper. So if you see like that, actually in nature there exists a series of interconnected food chains that is called a food web. So food chain is a hypothetical situation whereas food web actually exists in nature. And in this we are learning mainly two points. One is the flow of energy is unidirectional. Along with that we learned 10% law. But one more thing we have to study is just opposite of 10% law. That is here energy is decreasing and only 10% is available to the next trophic level. But there is another condition called the biological magnification. What is the meaning of magnify or in uh, physics lens and uh, mirrors and all you learned about magnification. How big it is, how, ma how many times bigger we see it. That is called a magnification. So biological magnification means if any chemical in the form of pesticides or other chemicals happen to get into this plant, when the grasshopper eats the plant, it will come to grasshopper. And that grasshopper eaten by frog, it will go to frog. Especially certain chemicals like a DDT, which was very harmful pesticide, they can neither be digested in the digestive system nor be excreted out. So once they are inside the body means it becomes a part of our body. So over a period of time the plants and animals will be eating more and more. That they get accumulated inside that is uh, not digested, not excreted. So it gets deposited. So when another animal is eating, the high concentration is going to the body of that organism. That organism if, you, if they consume 10 of those kind, definitely all will get deposited in its body. So unlike energy which decreases in each trophic level, a chemical entering an, a, a food chain or in an ecosystem, a food chain, the concentration increases from one trophic level to the next and the highest concentration will be present in the highest trophic levels. So this process of magnification or increasing the concentration of chemicals is called a biological magnification. Hope you understood everything well. If so, please like, share and subscribe to my channel Biology My Passion. Thank you for watching.